All right, so um, I'm Primetime000, the commissioner of the Sim Madden League, and with me today is the brains, the biggest brain in the SML. Can I say that? Uh, our Patriots owner, QB stud. What's going on, man? Hey, man, whether we can or say it or not, we're going to, right? Uh, yeah. We're going to. I'm going to, the new nickname, Jimmy Neutron. Uh, <laughs> first of all, before we get into this, you're a big analytics guy, uh, you said you have a little bit of a background. You like crunching numbers. So where did that all start from? Uh, my dad was a football coach and a math teacher. And so basically we passed the time with math games constantly. And that's what I did for fun when I was little. Uh, yeah. Basically, I grew up knowing I wanted to do two things. I wanted to work with numbers and I wanted to work with people. So just kind yeah. of grew on my way from there. Majored in enge an engineering discipline in college. Uh, we took a one course that had a lab that had a bunch of analytics in it and that was all fun so i do it for fun now that's pretty cool uh so like i said the brains of the sml and uh you created this this chart here 32 men in this league i've gave them my rankings you gave your rankings you dad daddy leagues uh and the analytics or am i mistaken on that that is correct all of them yes so so uh Obviously, uh, as we look at this list, I mean, the numbers don't lie. And when we look at this chart, there's some guys like Polly, for example. I just put it 32. But other than that, I mean, I think it's pretty pretty straightforward. Everybody's kind of all around the same spot. What do you think? Yeah, there was really only two places where we had big differings, and that was on myself, and that was on uh, our boy Mike, the Panthers. Uh, yeah. We had a difference of, I think, like nine or so on the Panthers and a difference of six, I think, on the Patriots. Yeah, so uh, let's just go ahead. Uh, I know we're in playoff time. We're, we're, it's going to be about 20 minutes in length. We're going to try and do this around 930. Um, but let's just go ahead kind of shoot down this list real quick, I guess. Uh, do you want to start at number one guy or do you want to start at the worst guy? You know, you have to build your way up, right? Let's start at the bottom. I started from the bottom, so, so I'll, I'll give you the blessing or the curse. of. Uh, let's, let's hear what you got. Sure. So at number 32 from our composite rankings, we had the Oakland Raiders. Uh, the Oakland Raiders have a have been stricken with bad luck, at least if you asked him. Uh, and basically with their one win of the season coming, you ask if that's a good thing or a bad thing, if you wanted to keep making sure you have a stronghold on that number one pick or if you want to keep working on development. Uh, I mean, I've seen good stick skills from him. It's just that he kind of admits himself when he feels that he gets hosed by the game. He lets it all go. you got to play for 60 minutes, man, or what, we have eight quarters, so 32 minutes, whatever it is. Yeah, uh, Raider fan, obviously a guy who lets his emotions get the best of him. Yeah, that's why he's number 32, and it's tough to disagree with that. Looks like uh, 31. My man, KJ Slanders, what I call him. Uh, what's your thoughts on the Dolphins and the guy who uh, seems just to be a good guy, just can't quite get the wins? I mean, yeah, so I'm going to preface this by saying he's absolutely a good guy, right? Uh, he's one of my favorites in the chat. And I just want to shout out real quick. Grams is talking trash on the scene behind me. I've got a two-year-old that spends all her time in here with me, so that's what all this is behind me. But anyway, yeah, KJ, uh, he's a good guy. He's basically needs to figure out his passing game. If he can get the interceptions under control, make it to where he makes smart decisions, I think he skyrockets up this list. Uh, you know, talk to him a couple times, maybe just trying to get him into the lab or whatever it is, if he can find time for it, I think he could get there. But until he puts that work in, he's going to be hovering around this spot here. Cool. Yeah, I agree with that. Once again, KJ Slender, great guy, just needs to – he's got a bad team as well, and that does play a role in it. Um as we've got, we've got some callers in uh, who are interested in calling, by the way. Not sure how we want to incorporate them. I got the Meats and Polly are lined up to join in. Um, the, we'll get to them in a second here. Let's just kind of speed this up. We got Giants, Titans, and Vikings all in a row there. Um, just, just very average guys, I might add. I mean, Polly's a new Vikings owner, so we can't say too much. But uh, Titans made playoff season one. Hasn't done too much after, and the Giants has just been pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, you work with what you're working with down there. A lot of times momentum's a big thing as well, so you hope that those guys can make a bounce back year next year and make some adjustments during the offseason. Yeah, I, I agree with that. So now we got the Falcons, Saints, Steelers. Once again, NYT, uh, he's an up-and-down guy. He'll beat the best player, then he'll lose to some bad dudes. Uh, that's just how NYT is easy, but not so great. And the Steelers, John Christman, who I actually think could be a great player. 
You know, uh, I think all three of those teams are among the most disappointing that we had, and it sounds easy to say that whenever you're at the bottom of the list, but these are definitely guys that, worst case, should be middle of the pack, and this is where they are. So you wonder if it's just a lack of focus, if it's not putting all their uh, attention into it or what it is, but I would like to see all three of them up higher on this list next season. Yeah, um, I, I agree with that. And I think in a second here we're going to have I Got the Meats join in and see what his opinions are um, on the on the chat here. So Meats, if you want to come on in, um, and uh, we want to get your opinions. But as we're waiting for Meats to kind of come on in here, we got the Rams, Lions, and Broncos. Terrible two-step. Uh, SML legend who hasn't done too well. The Lions, like I think your analytics hit it on the head. He was hot first half of the season, then got cold. Uh, that was kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't get to watch enough of his games, uh, mostly because it's very disorienting watching his view. He has that all-22 oh. view on his thing. Uh, I can't really watch it for too long. But he was legit. I mean, everyone was ready for him to take the lead by storm, and all of a sudden, I think he just lost his confidence. I had put, put a challenge out, to, challenge out to PJ, get your confidence back, come back ready next season, make sure you do it for a full season, because I think he can do it for sure. He's shown that he can do it. It's just whether he can do it over the full season or not. Yes, and uh, Meats, we'd like to welcome you to the show, our first caller into the show. Uh, how's it going, Meats? What's going on, everybody? Thanks for having me. Uh, Meats, we're talking SML power rankings right now, the Bucks, 49ers, and Packers. Uh, once again, a lot of guys who both all, – all three seem like they're right at the cusp of the playoffs, and they just don't quite get there. Uh, what's your thoughts on those guys? And Meats, once again, our number one ranked player in the SML, but we'll get that uh, to that later. Well, uh, those three guys, I mean, I'm in the AFC, so I, I don't see them a whole lot. Uh, Packers lawyer is a champ, uh, and it's just not lived up to that this year. Um, and uh, the Bucks, I mean, I played him just a couple weeks ago, and, and I, I play him in a bunch of other leagues, too. Uh, we're in at least one other league together, and uh, he's uh, underperforming in the SML, and I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just the competition's tougher, or, yeah, all three of those guys are really under underperforming expectations yeah um yeah yeah i mean you're right so we're kind of getting to the halfway point of the league here uh as we talked about the packers 49ers and buccaneers moving on qb stud you're actually one of the tougher guys i played but what happened uh you're sitting there number 18 what's going on with the patriots so what happened my self-diagnosis and this kind of i attributed to it toward the end of the year which is i think why i picked up a little bit more wins and at the very least performed a lot better was I was making real life reads, and so I threw far too many interceptions, not giving the proper respect to users. Uh, didn't, you know? I've played in leagues before. I've seen what users can do, but my brain was processing in a certain way. I took things for granted and didn't learn. I was too stubborn to adjust. Uh, finally, I sat down and forced myself to adjust, and I dropped down the interceptions pretty aggressively. My completion percentage skyrocketed, and I think. I had above an 80% completion percentage at the end of the year for the last, like, five games. Uh, so if I can carry that momentum into the next season, then I expect to be playoff bound, especially with a third-place uh, schedule as opposed to my first-place schedule this time. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, you were actually a very, very talented player. Record not indicative of how good you were. You played me pretty tight. Moving on, the Browns is one of my favorite teams that is disappointing. Then the Panthers at 16. They're a playoff team. But they're sitting there at 16. Uh, they're like a game over 500. And then the Cardinals. Uh, Meats, are you still there? And if so, Meats, so what is your thoughts on the uh, Carolina Panthers? I know you played them earlier this season, and they didn't do too well. I mean, they played you well. They played you well. Yeah, uh, the Panthers are honestly an underrated team. They played me actually pretty well. Um, I think I only won that game, I mean, by five points maybe. So... I don't know. The Panthers are a good, underrated team. Uh, I don't expect them to make much noise in the playoffs, but they c probably are going to contend for that division title almost every season. Yeah. So I know uh, that uh, because I have him ranked really low, I have to speak up on that as well. Basically, yes. what, it, what my ranking came down to was he was one of the only teams that didn't have a really hot point of the year. If you followed the lists that got sent out from uh, this spreadsheet that I have, the wins expected spreadsheet, or even just point differential, he sat at almost even point differential every time I looked at him on the sheet. He constantly had that projected to go 8-8, eight and eight, 
and this is where he sits. He ended up at 8-8. Eight and eight. So he looked like an 8-8 eight and eight team all year, whereas you have guys like the Browns, you have guys like Lawyer and the Packers, where they had points in the season where they looked legit. And to me, Mike never had that moment. And I probably rated him a little bit too low. I'm not going to lie there. But I stand by it just because he didn't win as hard as I thought he should have with some of the teams on his schedule, and he was just looked average the whole season. Yeah, yeah, um, I definitely think that that 22 or 23, whatever you had him at, is is way too low for Mike. Um, 18 is better. I don't quite think he's at 13, but somewhere between 18 and 13 is good for me. Yeah, and he's sitting at 16 uh, collectively, so I, that might be a good spot for Mike FML. Oh, I'm uh, happy with on. the 16. Yeah. Yeah, moving on. Uh, we've got the Cardinals, the Texans, and the Redskins. Honestly, Field General always seems like he's has a hot spurt and then a really freaking cold spurt Colt 45 kind of same deal. And then the Redskins who are up and down, but a scary team to play. I might add. Yeah. And so these are all teams that, again, I I would feel comfortable putting them ahead of someone like a Mike, because like you said, they had those hot spurts and it just comes down to getting control and being able to maintain that point throughout the year. Now, obviously that's a part of being good is being able to do that consistently, but they all have playmakers. They know how to use their playmakers, and they can make noise on defense, all three of those. So those are three real solid teams. And, I mean, the Cardinals just crash and burn toward the end of the year. They really should have been a playoff team this year. Yeah, I agree. Just crash and burn. Uh, moving on, we've got the uh, Bengals, Chiefs, and Eagles. So, obviously, the Chiefs, Bengals are not in the playoffs. Haas has took a nosedive this cycle. And uh, – Eagles are just snuck into the playoffs. They made the Super Bowl last season, didn't win it. Uh, Eagles, what do you think about them, man? They seem like uh, they're a scary team to play, but they have been up and down this year. Well, I mean, if you listen to Gov, then the Eagles are just a team that didn't really take the regular season seriously, which I don't know who that reminds me of, but it reminds me of someone else that likes to talk (laughs) a lot too. Uh, But, no, I mean, you can't ever count Gov out. If this was a power rankings purely on talent or ability to play the game he would be way higher in this list but just the body of work it wasn't there this season i can't pretend to know like i'm in his head and know what that is but one way or another it wasn't there he could absolutely turn it on it would not surprise me at all for him to tear through the nfc in the playoffs but it'll be interesting to see yeah i want to comment on these three teams and then i'll let paulie get in here um the eagles they're uh, kind of sleepwalking through the regular season there where they finish nine and seven, something like that, which sounds familiar prime. Um, so uh, as soon as they hit the playoffs, it's going to be a totally different team. Um, I, I don't, it's going to be a good game against the Cowboys. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, that one's a toss up chiefs and Bengals. Uh, Bengals are underrated. They're a good team. Uh, they got kind of the short end of the stick missing the playoffs with 11 wins this year or 10 wins or something uh but they'll be back next year and um yeah i I think the Bengals are a really underrated team uh the chiefs i think they're overrated even for missing the playoffs continue i just Uh, want to point out that i beat both the chiefs and the Bengals and probably kept them from the playoffs so my bad there you go (laughs) so uh so meets uh i know you did call in is there anything you did want to say before you hop off here yeah um I just want to, you know, screw you, NYT, for ruining my season. All right. That's all. <laughs> Obviously, the Ravens went 15-1. and one. Meats is a great player. Who knows what would have happened if he played all the starters that game. But Smart, he's playing for the, the long haul. It's a marathon, not a sprint. So, uh, Meats, anything else? Or uh, did you want to stick around? Or it's, it's totally up to you right now. Uh, if Polly's going to hop in, I'll hop out just so it doesn't just, get too crowded. But, I will um, just say, Polly's in a... Uh primer super bowl game right now oh so Polly's not coming oh Polly's weird coming. okay they, yeah. somebody's got to hype that up all right i'll so, stick around then so uh moving on uh we're now in the top 10 down to nine eight and seven we have the chargers who just won a huge game against the broncos the jaguars and the jets three uh teams who can win at any given moment uh, a lot of the Jets and the Chargers are running teams, and the Jaguars have a rookie quarterback who airs that freaking ball out. Yeah, so all three of those teams are teams with lots of talent on both sides of the ball. Uh, the Jaguars are a team that have tons of playmakers, both on offense and defense. 
he does a great job utilizing those guys on offense, but on defense a lot of the times, I don't know if it's because of pace of play or what it is, uh, he can't really stay up there with a lot of the other teams. He also laid a big egg against the Jets when they played each other a few weeks ago, and you wonder if that was just a lack of focus or if that was a sign of what's to come uh, soon. Yeah, um, Jaguars is known to, to lay some eggs and uh, in some big games sometimes. So that's his only his only Achilles heel is he'll win a lot of games, but he'll lay some freaking eggs. And obviously the Jets uh, was Super Bowl runner up two seasons ago. Can never count him out. I know you play him in your division. So here's okay. Now we got to talk about him. Number six in the rank is Conk. Is Conk rated too high? Um. Well. We had a little, you know, background discussion before we got this stuff put together, and Daddy Leagues had him at five because that was before his Week 17 bout against some team that doesn't matter that he lost. Uh, I think the way he played, if you take the whole body of work, this is about where he belongs. Uh, he's got a couple of playmakers on offense and defense. He utilizes them well enough. And if Ed Oliver goes back to his form that he was in just a few weeks ago, then he can beat anybody. Um, if Ed Oliver kind of shies away, if he doesn't get the sacks that he's used to having, if people bite down on the drag routes and the corner routes, then he could face some trouble and, and have an early exit. It wouldn't surprise me if he went deep. It wouldn't surprise me if he got blown out or anywhere in between. I think Conk really benefited from an easy schedule. He started 3-4, uh, and 4-4, four, four and four, and then he hit a really easy stretch for about 10 games there, and he won pretty much all of them, so, you know, Got to give him props for that one. But he had that such an easy schedule and didn't even win the division. So I think six is a little high for him. I think it's a little high given the fact of, uh, like you said, when it mattered, like he really wanted that game against the uh, against the Patriots. And that was, at that point, we thought it was a game where uh, his season could have been on the line. And he lost. He, he choked, man. I seen a lot of dumb decisions. I think Conk, I rated him at nine. I believe, and uh, yep. yeah, rated him at nine, and I think that's where Conk should be. I think eight, nine, uh, five, a little high. Daddy leagues, I know we ran this early, but either way, Conk still he's in the playoffs, and he could be dangerous if if he catches fire. And it looks like he's a streaky player. When he's hot, he's hot. When he's cold, he's cold. So I just wanted to see what you guys thought on Conk. But moving on now, we're in the top five. It looks like. Uh, we got the Cowboys, the Colts, and the Bears. Uh, what's your guys' thoughts on uh, Grams, myself, and Big Oshie? These are the elite of the elite now. Yeah, we're getting there, right? Top five. The top five has been pretty consistent throughout the entire season, so I want to point that out. You look at, you know, you talk about how does Conk belong at six. Honestly, six, seven, eight, to me, there's not a huge separation, but between five and those guys is cataclysmic. I mean, this is such a huge divide that separates you guys from everyone else so grams definitely belongs in that but i think even then he's kind of a little bit of a cut below and that's largely due to the beginning of the year the beginning of the year i watched some of his games uh, i'm a cowboys fan so i like you know seeing who's doing well with the cowboys and he would just make bad decisions he would miss reads but he cleaned that up toward the end of the year so hmm. he may catch fire at the right time and he may make some noise in the playoffs it wouldn't surprise me at all uh, and Gov may have uh, a little bit of a challenge, obviously, since he lost the division to him. Yeah. Meets? I, yeah, I, I agree with that completely. I think there's a big difference between the top five and the rest of the league. I'd put six and seven kind of in that middle there, Conk and, uh, Conk and the Jaguars. I, I'd put them kind of in that in-between phase stage, uh, and then I, there's a big gap between everybody else. I, uh, there's a lot, a lot of mediocre teams in this league. Um, and very few like top guys, uh, and that's where I think it starts is that top five. So uh, yeah, that being said, let's move on now. We've got the Bears, Seahawks, and then of course the Ravens, which was like the unanimous. Una I can't pronounce words. I'm not unanimous. a good pronouncer. <laughs> unanimous. <laughs> so, anonymous and unanimous is two words. So so <laughs> hey, I, I had a community college uh, education. So. Uh, Ravens at one, Seahawks at two, and Bears at three. Did uh, what do you think about those rankings? So I, I like them. Yeah, I had <laughs> Oshi at two just because he's one of those guys where he can completely shut you down, and he's built to play ahead, which he can easily get with turnovers. Uh, with Khalil Mack and what he does with Smith in the middle, I mean, it's dangerous. 
and if he gets ahead of you, it gets hard to come back. I think he also had by far the best pass defense in the league because of that. So if you get out in front of him, you can play ahead, and you know his passing game isn't very lethal. But if he gets out in front of you, then you're in trouble. I think in the second half of the season, I'd honestly put myself third out of those three. Uh, first half, yeah, okay, put me number one. But second half, I really started to give up a lot more points. Um, and the Seahawks' lone loss is the Bears. Uh, and I, I think the Bears took a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of days off and lost a couple of games. But I really think Oshie's been the best player in the league this season. Um, and I think, yeah, second half, I'd put myself third. Uh, I'm not trying to bring up old news here, but if you look at the top three, Ravens, Seahawks, and Bears, all three, the folding chairs of the SML. Uh, and I'm not trying to bring up old stuff, but that is kind of interesting. Uh, so as we, we got a few minutes before we got to close this out here, what do you think then? Uh, what's your playoff prediction, guys, uh, in terms of who's going to win the Super Bowl, who's uh, the team to watch for, and who's going who's gonna to choke it all away real quick? So uh, I've got, you know, it's the unfun or the unsexy pick, but I do have the Colts coming through to the to the playoffs and making it to the Super Bowl. Uh, and actually, I have Oshi finally making it up there. And then I think that it's going to be a really tough game, and it depends. Whoever goes up first is going to win that game, in my opinion. But I think because the Colts have a more balanced offense, they'll be able to take the another one. There you go. I think if anyone comes out of the AFC, it'll be the Ravens or the Colts. Um, flip a coin for that one. I agree. Uh, in the NFC, I think it's really between yeah, Seahawks and Bears. I mean, you can't ever count the Eagles or Cowboys out, mm -hmm. but I think this is the year that either the Seahawks or the Bears get a title. And I'm going the Seahawks or the Cowboys in the NFC. I'm counting everybody else out. And then I'm going to go Colts or Ravens. And uh, I think whoever wins the AFC will win the Super Bowl. So that's my prediction. So if it's me, it's uh, I'm winning the Super Bowl. If it's Meats, then he's going to win the Super Bowl and finally get that monkey off his back. That's a big debate so. in chat sometimes, right? I know uh, Grams and I have been going at that, but the AFC, if you just look at at least the analytics that I have here, is vastly superior to the NFC. You can argue that the top end of the NFC can compete with the top end of the AFC, but the AFC has been through the ringer, whereas the NFC, usually they don't really go through that much until you get to the playoffs. Is that enough time to ramp up to your best games? I mean, Gov literally just coasted to the playoffs, and he made me, right. people pay for it. So you have to wonder, is, is training in the hyperbolic time chamber that is the AFC going to help you guys pull through and win out the Super Bowl? Mm. I think so. Wow. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. There's a lot more big games year-round in the AFC – because you got an 11 win team that missed the playoffs and like you said in the nfc gov coasted in with nine wins so um i think that definitely sets the afc up better long term yeah i agree with that um so as we're kind of closing up here we're at 9 30 p.m eastern uh, i know we got some playoff games about to kick off um any more or final or closing thoughts as we near the end of this podcast no, I mean, uh, it was a lot of fun making some of these things. Uh, if, if anyone wants to see anything else, maybe if we could get feedback on this podcast, if we want to do more live podcasts in the future, I'm sure Prime would be interested in doing that. I would, and I don't mind having guests or making it live or whatever it is. Uh, it's been lots of fun. My first season, first yeah, first season in the league, so it'll be good to see the yeah. playoffs. QB Stud's my pick for Rookie of the Year, uh, for the cycle even, not even just for this season. Um yes. Because, Prime, you know me. I love these statistics and stuff like this. Like, it, it, That's my thing. If I could do that for a living, I would. Um, and, you know, it's nice to see somebody that does it better than me. Yeah. Uh, obviously, two very talented people on the podcast. You're one graphically, the other one with numbers. Two things I'm not very good at at all. But I am good at Madden. I do a lot of games. So uh, take that how you want it. But uh, once again, <laughs> uh, I did have fun. I think it's cool having these live shows. I know the SML Honors is something I'm thinking about bringing back. I know Meets hinted at rookie of the year with qb stud and he's on the right track i do appreciate what you've done qb stud and obviously meets with the graphics and everybody who's listening or watching we're, we're probably gonna upload this on youtube to be rewatched. and i just want to say guys it's playoff time it's my favorite time of the year and uh, get ready and if you got offended by your rankings don't at us get better hit the practice hit the lab and uh that's how you get your rankings up not by complaining america numbers america. don't lie numbers that's don't right. lie 
So, all right, guys, I'll let you close this out. All right, yeah, like I said, uh, this is QB Stud, uh, the pa SML Patriots. If you want to see more of this stuff, let us know, uh, and we'll make sure we get that content out to you. Sweet. SML Ravens, I got the meat signing off. Is it my year? Probably not, but we'll find out. <laughs> see you guys. See ya. See ya.